Big Boy Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. This has been a hey. long time coming. Lunel, hey. what the hell? Hello. <laughs> We got Lunel in the neighborhood. First off, we got to say welcome to the neighborhood, my love. Oh, it's a different neighborhood than the one I live in. Hello. Thank you so much. It's been a long time. Hey, Lunel, we were just talking a few days ago, and when you said it's a different neighborhood than the one you live in, do you, where you come from? You you still stay near the Shaw. You say you still stay right near the Marathon, and you was like, I'm I'm good, but I haven't left the hood yet. Well, here's the deal. To, to really be cut and dry, I, as you see, I'm wearing my armor. I have my Nipsey shirt on. Mm -hmm. I have a marathon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hoodie. And I, I feel like I go out of town, and you can forget what happened out of town. But you come back in town, it's like the Band-Aid got ripped again. Yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like I got to put on my armor. Well, but... Hell, this ain't by choice. I mean, God, I want to live in Marina Del Rey. Yeah. But my, uh, my bag does not match my popularity, right. as Monique right. said. Right. So we're working on changing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a community-type chick. I came from Oakland, California, to literally the same neighborhood in L.A. <laughs> right. And people go, I can't afford to live in L.A. Yes, you can. You just have to live below the 10 freeway. Go ahead. So, now. you know, get well. over it. And I'm not scared of my people, so I ain't got no problem. Everybody like me. I've been there for years and years, 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 years. You know, I got, I got a few buildings. There, myself, if you can't pay my daughter's rent down the street yeah. in the building. Yeah, I do that. But, you know, someday I, I will move. But for now, it's like uh, it keeps me even more than grounded than I, than I was. Mm -hmm. Just realizing that, you know, all the stuff I do, you know, everywhere else is fake. And this is real life. Right I here. heard that. And um, I'm glad that I'm able to stay in touch. And when you say rip the Band-Aid off, you were just talking about like, man, I remember Nip shooting, you know, videos here. You And, and you knew Nip. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, I only met him once on the uh, video shoot for, I think it was Hustle in the House. It was literally wow. like two blocks away from my house. And I remember asking the guy in the record store that's also no longer there. That he, Nip had just did, did an in store and I had just missed it and mm -hmm. he had a big poster in there that, that was autographed and I asked him could I have it oh. not because I was really into his music so much but I thought it was cute ooh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> ooh this boy is cute <laughs> now, everybody knows you know I have an affinity for the younger gentleman <laughs> they as well have an affinity for me go ahead now so I took that poster it's been in my living room for over 10 years wow. Wow. so now I've got the poster and the GQ magazine magazine hey. yeah, and the man. final call that the the, the, the nation program. gave out mm -hmm. that day you couldn't even buy one i tried yeah. to give a 20 dollar donation they said this is a gift from the honorable minister louis farrakhan and i have his program from the staples center so i have like a little nipsey shrine oh, i heard that man were you ever married on a lighter note, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, you? are you married now, Ludell? Or I, you I, just keep the you just keep that armor uh, on too? Uh, okay, so you know where they have the box that say single, mm -hmm. then they have a box that say divorce, mm -hmm. then they have a box that say it's complicated. Yeah. That's the box I check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I have been married. I think I got a divorce. <laughs> Not sure if it's legal. So I could still be married, but I'm actually divorced, but he doesn't believe it. And so oh when you gosh. say it's complicated, it's really complicated. It's complicated. It's Man. Complicated. Now, now you say you like the younger guys. You know what I'm saying? They do like Lunel, me. Do Listen, you date Lunel? I don't really date. I just have sex. Right. I don't have time. <laughs> Straight up. I don't have time to date, baby. I'm on tour. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to spend a little time with Ain't he up in the room after the show? <laughs> you know, we can do that. But I really don't. I don't date. Um, most of my dates that I go out on are with my gay guys, and they're fabulous, and they take me to fabulous places. But I like to go to fabulous places, and the guys I like to have sex with ain't fabulous. So uh -huh. yeah. it's complicated. Hey, man. Lunell, you know what we hear all the time? We hear, like, the men, the celebrity men, like, oh, man, give me that one in the green. Bring her over here. And I always did ask, like, do ladies do kind of the same thing? Like, like oh, I yeah. definitely do for sure. Hey, hey, what's up? That's oh. that's how it's yeah. But but mostly when when it comes to being a comedian, you it's hard a female because if you're a man comic, then a girls will come on girls night out and stuff like that. Bill Bellamy and stuff like that. But if you're a female comic, most of the guys come with a chick and chick mm -hmm. will bring them. 
So there's no strays after the show. Right. But those waiters, those waiters are very thankful to me across right. the country. <laughs> they'll serve her. Hey. Hey, Linnell, so when you're on the road, you don't have no problem with smashing? you like... Yeah, I got a problem with it. Time is a problem. Okay, just that. Okay. I get in late and I got to be up early flight and got to go and I got to pack. You know, I don't mind traveling. I don't mind touring. I don't mind meeting people. I don't mind doing my job. What I do mind is packing and unpacking. I heard that. That is the bane of my existence. And it's really hard to teach somebody how to do it. Yeah, man. Because you may want to change your accessories or change your perfume or I was Got to wear those shoes, and now I want to wear these uh-huh. shoes. What you pack those shoes for? Why didn't you ask me? You're fired. So you hands on everything. <laughs> um, you got to be hands on everything. I'm hands on everything. Linnell, we see now <laughs> that comics comics used to have an open license to certain things. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, oh, a comedian can say it. A comedian can say it. Now it seems like there's a lot of people that's a little more sensitive, even to comedy now. What do you feel about that, how, like, the comedians could do certain things, and now it seems like that's even becoming censored? Well, for myself, I've always had the brand of keeping it 100 and saying what I want. So this would be nothing new for me Mm -hmm. and my style. They expect that from me. You can't start off like, you know, you know, a really nice guy and then start going hard, like maybe politically and stuff, if that's not really your, if you can't take the backlash, yeah. okay? But I think that we do have license to say anything about anybody if it's funny. funny. Not being just, you know, mean or mm. not just being snappy or snarky, but if at the end of the day it's really funny, even a good N-word joke to me from a white person, if it's funny. Right, you know? right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, you know, I hate you for that, but that's funny. Yeah, you know? I, I did laugh a little bit. <laughs> I wow. mean, don't tell nobody else, but that is funny. <laughs> you heard that chuckle on the back, that was me. <laughs> yeah, but don't yeah. do it again, like, at the party and the cookout. Now, how, did, how did you get into comedy? Was um, it always low-hanging fruit for you as far as, like, you, you were always uh, funny and people were like, I knew she was going to be that? Uh, pretty much, but there was a time before I got to be that person where I was very... Put upon, you know, it, it'll be in the book. You know, there's mm-hmm. a very sad part of my life that leads up to me busting through with humor. Because when you go through certain adversities, you can either let them take you over and take you under, or you can fight and scratch your mm-hmm. way through. That's what I did. Uh, everything that's happened to me in my life, there is no reason that I should be doing comedy. Wow. None. I could relate to, I'm, I used to say I could relate to every episode of Oprah. And that's sad, you yeah. know? But I basically don't want people to feel bad. And so my gift, if you're given one in this life, I think my gift is to just make everybody, when they see me and stuff, happy. Yeah, and, man. And that, and that's what, how yeah. I got into it, though. My, it's really, you know, long story, but my roommate was screwing a comedian. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh-huh. Can you say screw? Yeah, yeah of course you can. <laughs> screw, screw, screw. My, I want to, to be a bad girl. So uh, my, my roommate was screwing a comedian. He ran a club. He was around the house, so they started seriously dating. He told me I was funny. He said, if you ever want to go on stage, I got a club. I'm like, I ain't trying to do that. I want to sing background for Luther. Yeah, that was yeah. in my oh, mind because okay. I've been smoking weed a long time. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, but I went down there one day. I went up, and I met that very night the late, great Robin Harris, the yes, first time yes. I ever went on stage. So it just sort of snowballed from there. I met a young D.L. Hughley and stuff like that. How do you um, take that pain of, of life and turn that into comedy, though? Like something that's not funny. And you probably wasn't laughing at, you know, most of the situations that you had been through in life. How do you get on stage and be, and make people laugh? You can't make them laugh. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. Just like singing or anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, you see things differently than other people do. I mean, I was busting up cracking up at my mother's funeral. Why? Right. He, I was sitting in the front row. I was bent over doing like this. Everybody thought I was crying. <laughs> but my mama's friend wanted to sing at the funeral. <laughs> Nobody told her, low key, she can't sing. <laughs> and then she didn't want to do not three verses, five yeah, verses. Yeah, man. I'm like, oh! Yeah. And I just thought, <laughs> everybody thought I was crying. I was cracking up at my mama's funeral. So if oh, I can do that, oh I can make, you know, uh, it, it, look at anything in, in a humorous oh, way. Man. man, we've been talking about this hot girl summer. 
Have you been having the so-called hot girl summer where you just having the, the time of your life? Unapologetic. Yeah. Actually, actually I have. Yeah. Hey, tell us. <laughs> because, as we were about to talk about, I, I have a residency in Las Vegas. Yeah, oh. man. So I'm in Vegas weekly. I wore the... I, <laughs> Um, Sunday is the day that I'm there. I'm at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club every Sunday night at 10. Sunday night, before I got ready, I was getting ready to do my show Sunday night. I put on my makeup. I did the show Sunday night. I went to Dre's after the show. I went back to the room, to Eddie Griffin's room, kicked it. Went to my room, kicked it. Went and did two TV shows the next morning. Flew home. Same makeup. Go ahead. Hey, that's hey, hello. Same makeup. And that's Recycle the hot girl that's summer right hot there. Girl. <laughs> how, how is the residency going for you right now? And let me tell you, first off, congratulations on that. You know what I'm saying? And and I saw, I haven't been there, but I saw what Jimmy Kimmel, what they put together out yes. there. Nice spot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and pretty much can pick and choose who comes in. And you landed that as well from Sunday. Are you Sunday to Only what? Sunday. Only Sunday. Baby, this old broad don't need but one day in Vegas. I heard that. One day in Vegas is like two weeks in Tijuana. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I had had a residency once before. I was blessed to kind of gangster in uh, a residency at the SLS yeah. Hotel and hey. Casino alongside Eddie Griffin and Monique. So when that ran out... My agency, Innovative Talent Agency, shout out to my agent, Tamara Goins, also from Oakland. Oakland! Okay, Mm -hmm. so Tamara went to bat for me. I I knew nothing about it. Uh, She came, she said, it may be a good chance that you get a residency. I was like, Kimmel? Like, like Jimmy Kimmel? She said, yes, and, you know, his comedy club is not in a casino. It's in the Link Promenade. It's brand new. It's Mm -hmm. not even four months old. And the fact that Jimmy Kimmel knows everybody mm. yeah. and could mm-hmm. have got a man, because mm. this is the first residency in the club, could have got a man, yeah. could have got a white man, mm-hmm. could have got a young white man. You mm-hmm. got an old black bra from Crenshaw on the Las Vegas Strip. They done fooled around and let a real one in. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you, Jimmy. <laughs> so you're every Congrats. Sunday night. Every Sunday night at 10. I heard See, that. See, and everybody can't go. If you can't go, you got to go to work at the factory. This ain't the show for you. Oh. But if you're a baller and you can hang out in Vegas and you just... <laughs> a lot of people come into Vegas because they got convention that week. Yeah, hell and yeah. And they're looking for something to do Sunday mm-hmm. night. But also, big boy, to sit in here, you know, where I, I've been fighting to get in here. Like, mm. it's been crazy. I'm like, why have I not done big boy? Now I'm here. So many people, you're such a legend. I knew you were you too, fat, 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 yeah. fat. <laughs> well, thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know me now. <laughs> fat, 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 fat. Hello. And, you know, you've been going, like, I don't know how you do it. And you know everybody, you've called it. You got a story, too. Yeah. We talked, too. Yeah. And you done come a long way, too, mm-hmm. yeah. to build a legacy like this here. So this is what life is about. Try to make, you got to leave some kind of legacy. It's up mm, to you yes, what ma'am. type of legacy Yeah, what it be. is. So I just thank you for having me in it's here our pleasure. and seeing all these different mm-hmm. nationalities. But you real as hell, hell too, though. <laughs> yeah, and my got my punani is bomb. Wait, really though? <laughs> oh, she said her punani is bomb. I heard her. What did yeah. I know? Yeah. Ask the boys. I ain't got a lot of. Uh, right, right. <laughs> what, oh, what's man. your type? Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah, do you have a type, Lunell? Um, yeah. no, I, uh, Latinos love me. So yeah. 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 I get kind of orale. I don't know. I like, listen, this is what's wrong with women. They're always trying to like somebody who don't like them. Right. Like who like you. I if somebody that. like you, he may not be your type. Like, give it a chance, yeah. you know? <laughs> this might be the dude of your dream just because yeah. he's, you know, short. Or, yeah. I don't date anybody that's six feet tall. That's, that's, that's me. just ridiculous. Hey, dude, that's her. That's okay, me, guess what? Six Prince, five. Guess what? Cat Williams, uh, Prince, Kevin Hart. Uh, Billionaire, not six uh, feet tall. Now, go you, ahead. Do the math on that. <laughs> you do the math on that. Neither is John Legend. Right. Shout out to <laughs> short John Legend. Yeah. Dude, John Legend. Yeah. Oh, hey, man, man. I, I love how it's almost a compliment at the Ooh, same time. Yeah. Shout out to short John Legend. Right. <laughs> We, he, we, we, he can stand on his wallet and yeah, be as tall as Will Chamberlain. Hello. Hello. He's not hey, that now, short, though. He's now, a good height. Now, we were talking, we had Blueface <laughs> in the neighborhood, and Blueface recently told us that he smashed a thousand women since January. If you'd like to smash a thousand and one, 
Give him my number. Go ahead. <laughs> See, this is why I believe him. Yeah. No, but you yeah. know what? Okay, first of all, that's disgusting. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> now that you thought about second it. Second of all, did you smash a thousand women safely? Yeah, he How about that? that yeah. Yeah, let's talk about mm. that. You know, same sex people is very, very important. Even when you're drunk in a threesome in Las Vegas. Right. You really need to use, I mean, I didn't stay long. I'm just saying. Uh, you need to use safe sex at all times. AIDS is real. Mm-hmm. Gonorrhea ain't gone nowhere. They just ain't talking about I long for the good old day of syphilis and gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah. All you have to do is get a shot and drink, uh, take the pills every day for seven days. I heard oh, that. But now, you know, you can get some. And, and there's a lot of good looking people at the pool party mm-hmm. infected. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you know, keep yourself Safe, I'm just preaching to the choir. I know you talk about safe, safe. I know you do. Yeah. That right. pool water in Vegas be creeping me out. I'm like, oh, it's I don't like know if acid I get in there. rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like acid rain. You don't know what's in that. That's what they test that water. They nah, should. Hell no. in, in, in the, I can't and people be in no there casino. all day. Yeah, don't what? say no casino. You don't want to mess with no work. <laughs> Look, hell, your residency has been terminated. <laughs> yeah. or, or they were like, man, we were just considering her, and, and now she done blew that out. No, Lunell, no. do you smoke? What? <laughs> <laughs> do you smoke weed absolutely i heard that. i need you to said- smoke more weed that's a, a, what i need to do why because i be on edge and you know sometimes you know it's a lot when you are a celebrity but you still do live in the hood mm-hmm. it's a lot to go pump gas Mm. They want to take a picture with you, but they don't want to pump gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Say don't it. know the cuss outside I done had at the gas station. <laughs> and, you know, just to go to the grocery store, you know, and then my demographic is huge. It's black, yeah. it's white, it's old people, it's young folks. And every time I go out, I don't want to do a photo shooting. And if you don't, the same person that wanted to take a picture with you call your B-word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's difficult, you know. Um, so you need to smoke just so you can bring that down. Yeah, because, you know, when I would cuss you out, I'd just be like, whatever, let's take it. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what's good about marijuana. But I- you you have a look where if I saw you, I'd be like, boom, that's Lunell. Do, yeah. do, do people recognize you? Do you know when people recognize you? It's I either feel from, the eyes. No, one. And I'm not even talking about recognize you like that. I'm talking about from where. It could be, oh, they must have seen me on a, a mo- on Borat. Borat, I get they a must, lot. Yeah, so, so or they, or they see me. Cat I get a lot. Yeah. School dance, I get a lot. So you'll see people and you're kind of like, oh, okay, I wonder where they know me from. Or sometimes no, you're like, I know. Me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I loved you back in Devin Goose's high school. Do you know. do do you see more acting coming up for you as well? Yeah, hell yeah, you know, yeah. With this Dolomite movie's about to knock oh people gosh. in the hey, Dolomite, man. bro. The trailer is out. You will see me. This Eddie Murphy as Dolomite. They talking about bro. oh Wesley Snipes is signed on to do yeah. Dolomite. Oh, uh, Tidy Bird is signed. Uh, and, uh, no, that's coming to America. My movie yeah. next up, which I'm in as well. You ain't coming to America yes, as well. I am. Have yes. they finished? Did are yes, they sir. doing that yet? Because uh, call somebody uh, for uh, me. Uh, mm, okay, mm, all right. I'm about to tell you. Mm, I'm about to say call. I didn't me. say it too much already. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah star, but but Dolomite is star studded, you know, and Ti and Snoop's uh, in it. I saw Snoop Snoop's in, in it. Yeah, you can't be Dolomite and, without Snoop. Mm. He be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was. But you and Snoop got a good relationship as well. Uh-huh. Because I saw, I saw you at the, uh, what was it, the Snoop Dogg Roast. Yeah. 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 I got a good relationship with all the boys. I hang out, you know, Bobby Brown, I'll be sure. Right. Yes. <laughs> I like the boys, baby. The boys like me. Do you smoke with celebrities? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody that smoked you under the table uh, or you smoked them under? Yeah, Snoop. Man. You know, mm. when you be at the, like, have you ever seen the GGN yeah. mm, thing where we're at uh-huh. the table? So it's like a, a relay race of uh, blunts pass. Oh my pass. God. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you were like, oh, oh, I got both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all you do for two hours. But I don't smoke blunts, so mm-hmm. that cuts down on a lot of me socially smoking with people. What do you smoke? I like I'm good old zigzag girl from the Cheech and Chong day. Mm-hmm. I like right. Snoop's got some rice papers. Go ahead. Oh yeah. That's so he gave me like you know, keep it friendly for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I got. Lifelong supply of zigzags. <laughs> hey man, and, and it's for the rest of your life. For it's my, for the rest of your life. week. For the rest of Snoop's week. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It'll last me the rest of my life. But I'm an old can smoke a joint for two days type girl. You know, like how high do you really want to get? Mm-hmm. I just want to get that high. I just want to get high high. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get high high high. high. <laughs> Where do you see us at politically right now? Do you do, on, on stage? Do you talk any 
politics? I don't talk politics, not because I can't, because I have. But with the... See, comedians are the most unprotected entertainers in the world. You can't walk up on stage on New Edition. You can't right, right, right. walk up on stage on Mary J. Blige. But people walk up on stage on us. I'm actually starting a a, a, a thing, like a campaign about safety mm. for comics. Clubs do not protect us unless we have our own security. People walk up on stage all the time. Mm-hmm. Same person walk up on yeah. stage to hug you, go walk up on stage and harm yeah. you. We don't have no metal detectors. Mm-hmm. That's true. So I don't talk about it because it's such a hot bed right now yeah. and I don't want to get in the heckling match with somebody and turn the show down. My show is more of the fun stuff. And I you know, and I don't want to go to the Midwest, Wisconsin and get in it with, you know, yeah. Edith and them My- in Wisconsin about politics. I just pretend like they don't exist. I, I pretend that. like, you know, like we don't even have And then plus Lunell, it's everywhere. Sometimes People want to get away. Yeah, we're yeah. a laughing stock. I've been to Africa and the cab drivers and your president. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. You know, I mean, we're a laughing stock right now. It's a joke. The only thing that's going to save us will be women and the young, the youth, if they get into politics, or else we're done for. Um, uh, I, uh, I, I, I want to have a place where for maybe two hours. I've got a couple of great comics of myself, and I do mean great because I don't work with hacks. Everybody mm. knows that. Hello. You can't be kind of funny and work with Linnell. You got to slay. A lot of headliners don't want to people to head them to slay, but I don't have a problem with that because I want you to leave exhausted. Mm-hmm. Like I want them to say, what a great show. Show it I don't want two comics working day behind off and everybody's talking about me. I mean, that happens anyway. But Hello. I'm just saying, I tried, you know. Um, I, I, I want to talk about things that, Every nationality can relate to, you know, kids, weight, Mm -hmm. relationships, Mm -hmm. school, money, and stuff like that. And I want you to be able to have a grown adult beverage. And for two hours, it's like you're in laughing Disneyland. That's my goal. Yeah. For grown folk. How's how's the residency set up right now? Do you do you have so called opening acts? I have a host that is named Skills Hudson who's from here but has been living in Vegas, a hardworking, wonderful guy that I gave a break to when I first seen him. And the second uh, person who's just joined my team, his name is Aaron Thompson. He's really cute. Mm-hmm. I, 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 mean, <laughs> I don't know his nationality. He mixed up things. He's black, Puerto Rican. <laughs> All those. Latin, got pretty hair. And he's actually 5'0". Because oh, no. everybody know I don't hang with 5'0". But that's what makes him funny. He's a Mexican and he a cop. Wow. Now, if that ain't a good start of some humor, yeah. <laughs> LAPD. So I got him and then we have myself. Wait, that's funny. Aaron. What, what is his name? Aaron Thompson. Is he is he in does he work out in Burbank a lot? Like at, at uh, I don't the club know out his, here? I don't know. His, oh yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, yes, he does. man. He's been ha-ha's and stuff yes. like that. He's hilarious. This Aaron is my Thompson. project. Yep. That's my project. That was <laughs> So now, that's my project. Like I, I got him. Like that's y'all can have it. Dope. And so I, I, I put, met him at Nickerson's he's for the T D E thing. Me. And he was at a TDE and he was like, oh. Man, because he was in full uniform. Mm. He said, Man, I do comedy too. That's I'm gonna get dope. him. Uh, he's in Vegas with me right now. My goal, even though we know God knows we need great officers, I don't want nothing to happen. My goal is to get Aaron Thompson off the streets of LA. Oh. Yeah, man. And yeah. to be a star where he need to be. There's too many unhumble people. He's an humble guy. He got a family. I would just be destroyed if something happened to him. I've had so much death. I just can't take no more. Mm-hmm. So I want I want my goal is to get Aaron Thompson off off the streets of LA. Lunell, let me ask you about like women's rights, women's pay. And it seems like with with women as well, y'all have to be twice or three times as good. It, yeah, every lady got to have enough. You, even in comedy, you got to be funny enough. You got to be woman enough. You got to be this enough. You got to be that enough. Do you see that happening? A lot, and how uncomfortable, if you are, does that make you? Well, like we saw Monique couldn't get her pay, and then you see somebody else go get it. Well, hmm. um, okay, there are people in the business that deserve way more money than they're getting paid. I'm one of them, mm-hmm. and there are people in the business who are getting paid way more 
than their worth. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. There are people in the business who think they're worth more than they're getting paid, and they're not that. Like, you got to be, like, are you, you know, $40 million worth of funny? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of the delusional people are not that. Then there's the delusional people that get that. Right. It's a tricky situation right now. I'm not satisfied with my money at all. You know, I I believe I work very, very hard. I believe I'm at the top of my game. There's a lot of people out there that work hard, too, and at the top of their game. I'm just talking about for me. I believe that I'm not getting paid what I'm what I'm worth and what I deserve for being 30 years in this game. But, you know, are you going to sit home and whine about it and, you know, rave a flag and stuff? Are you going to go get the money that's yeah. out there? So I'm going to go get the money that's out there until mm -hmm. the money change, you know. I just don't want to be like, the, where's the beef, lady? And I get paid $80 million when I'm 73 years old, be dead at 75. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, can't enjoy it. Like, and the Lord would just rain down on me right now, Lord. <laughs> and that's one of those put my money in the grave because I don't work so hard for uh, it. I don't want nobody to have it. You know what I, what I, got, well, I got one daughter. That's it, one kid. She gets the whole legacy. If she never worked a day in her life, I got enough content for her to sling sell merchandise and stuff. Be a very rich girl, probably richer than her mama. I heard but that. she ain't thinking about me. She's yeah. a dancer. Oh, really? Uh -oh. Yeah, she danced. She danced behind like Kamaya and this other. Oh, artist. that's dope. And this other artist named All Black. They just did a thing up in Oakland, like Rolling Loud type thing. That's really cool. awesome that she's working Yeah, she ain't thinking about, ain't think about me. She's <laughs> right. 23, she 23 years old. You know, no, that's that's she's not the kid to be like, what am I going to do with my life? My mama's doing that. My daughter's like, bye, mom. I'm on tour. And, you know. <laughs> Does she say Lunell's daughter or is she do, getting her own thing? Lunell's my mom. Right. Oh, right. Oh, Lunell's my that, mom. That, that gets the door open. Hell yeah. Lunell, do you get recognized everywhere you go? Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's man. Awesome. How like, long have you had your hair? To in here. How long have you had your hair cut down and blonde? Probably, let me see, my daughter's 23. She never seen me not blonde. Wow. So, so one time when I was hot, I messed it up. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. Uh, probably 30 years. That's probably crazy. Years. And been na wearing nails since 76. Wow. Because that is when the first started and they didn't have tips or anything. Yeah. And my girlfriend, Vanessa Gutierrez, shout out to Vanessa, <laughs> wherever you are. I haven't seen you in about 25 years, 30. <laughs> She'll catch up. Yeah, she probably ain't the last She going to be at the uh, residency? F, F Trump ain't got her locked up somewhere. But, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, no, she legit. Right. But uh, <laughs> she started doing nails and would just experiment on me. And so that's how I, I've been wearing them for her. The only people I ever grew up with saw nails. Don Ross had nails and Cher had nails. Mm -hmm. Now that. nails are popping right now. Like people get them longer and longer. Do, does it bug you when people ask you, like, how do you wipe your ass with yeah, those? Yeah, I tell them the same <laughs> way I wash it. Get the hell out of my face. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Lunell, thank you for coming thank into the neighborhood, you. man. The comedy red residency is going down. The Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club in yeah. Las Vegas every Sunday night at 10 p.m. And keep shining, baby yes. girl. And you keep doing what you do, too. You're not just a radio personality. I know what you're doing in the community and stuff like thank that. Thank you, my love. Lunell in the yes. neighborhood, big boy big neighborhood. Boy. woo -hoo.